One of the most challenging thing in life is when people do not understand that they're not just born to do whatever they want to do. They are born because God has allowed them to come to planet Earth. God Almighty has a plan and a purpose for every one of you that's sitting here. Every one of you that listening to my voice. You're not an accident. God has a plan for your life. But as a person, if you do not have that desire to know what is God's plan for your life, it's going to be hard for you to be in the absolute will of God. Because a lot of people do not understand that we are a spirit. Every one of you, you're a spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. But you that I'm watching right now, it's not you until you start talking to me, until I can recognize what kind of spirit is driving you, is, 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 is leading you. When people open their mouth, and if you have the spirit of discernment, you can understand what is their mindset, who's leading them, who's the drive behind or the force behind their life. And we as children of God should understand that. We have to understand that if you are born again, it should be the Holy Spirit who is leading you. It should be the Holy Spirit who is the force in your life. It should be the Holy Spirit who creates this new mindset. Anytime is your will. Anytime is your emotions. Anytime is your, is your regional thinking. Is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the force behind whatever you do, you're in the flesh. Even though it seems like it is a good thing. A good thing doesn't mean that it is a God thing. A good ID doesn't mean it's a God ID. We have to understand, my brother and sister, that as we sit here, as we live here in planet Earth, God has a plan and a purpose. I, again, I remind you uh, thereof. And in God's plan, God is, 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 is trying to bring you to the place so that you will come, you know, in, in a situation where you will say, not my will, but thy will. It's very important, my brother and sister, pastors, every uh, leaders that's sitting here to understand that the most important thing for God in our life is not the will of your apostle, not the will of your, your husband, not the will of your wife, not your will of your children, not your will of the will of the political party, but the will of God for you personally in your life. God works with families. God works with couple, but even though he works with them, still he has for every one of us an assignment. Amen? If that's not the fact, for example, if you have a husband, he, he, he doesn't really want to serve God, then, then your assignment, you know, will never come to pass. So as a, a family, you have an assignment, as husband, as wife, but as a person, God also has an absolute assignment for you. A will for you. And people, even if you're not married, that doesn't mean that you cannot fulfill the will of God for your life. As a person, every one of us has an assignment that God had assigned to us. So for us, this day, this day is important to have that desire to understand what is the will of God for our life. And in, in, if in the service, the first service this morning, I went step by step to show you how Jesus understood and came to know what the will of God for his life was. One of the things that you can look always, uh, you, you can go back to, is the prophecy that was spoken over your life. You're born again, you came in church, or you were born in church, and the prophecy that they spoke over your life, that's very important, the prophecy. 
when a man of God or a woman of God calls you and gives you a prophecy or gives you a dream and tells you, that is what the Lord has you. And you see that different people came and tell you the same thing. That's already an indicator that that's the direction that God wants to go with you. Secondly, for time's sake, I'm not going to go further in it, listen to the, the surface of this morning. Secondly, what is important is prayer, fasting, and the word of God. Prayer, fasting, and the word of God. Prayer, fasting, and thirdly, the word of God. So, if you want to know the will of God, even though if your mother will tell you, when I dedicate you to the Lord, when you were a little boy, a preacher told me that about you, a preacher pray about you, or I, have, I had a dream about you of when I, 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 I was ready to conceive you, God told me I had to call you Guillermo because God said, you know, we see that in the Bible, God told Mary his name should be Jesus because he would be the savior of the world. God told Rebecca, call him Isaac. And we know that the name Isaac means laughter. And, 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 and that's very important for us to understand that God can also give you, before that child is born, direction. For example, my two children, both of them, I pray to the Lord and I ask the Lord, what should be their name? And the Lord told me, call her Miracle. Because I'm going to use her in that, in that realm. But also, anytime you look at her, remember that I'm a miracle working God. So I, be, I believe in miracles. I believe in impossible things. And anytime my miracle walks by, it's for me, because of what God told me personally, a reminder that God is a miracle working God. You know? And secondly... My, 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 my youngest girl, the name is Treasure. And, and, and I was praying to God and said, what kind of name can I give her? And the Lord told me, Brongas brought a song in my heart, Treasure of my heart and of my soul. And, 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 and the Lord said, always remember that you're very treasures in my heart. Yeah, you are a, a person of worth. Anytime you see her, she, remember how treasurous you are. In, our, in, 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 my, in my life. So, and they are living the life. They, 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 I, I start seeing things that they are doing. And I see character, you know. Their character is the other one wants to be alone by herself peacefully. But the other one is, you know, she will always come to me and let me know that she is my treasure. You know, so, so it's important to you, for you that when God gives you indicators how to call your name is also an indicator what the will of God shall be for their life. So, we as people, not only that we have to look at prophecy and listen to the word that our, especially parents, are speaking over us or our grandparents. I remember and I, I'm recounting these things to help somebody here tonight. That when I was born, I had a, a mark on my head. And my grandmother was looking at that mark and, say, and was saying, he's going to be our, our preacher. He's going to be our preacher because he had what we call in Suriname language a God marky, a God marky. So he's going to be a preacher. And I was, uh, 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 when, when I came to my grandma, she was always say, preach him, come here, Domri. And I would say, no, 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 I'm going to be a military policeman. And I became that military policeman. You know, but... God has already marked me to be a servant of him. And God makes sure that <laughs> his way and not our way so that I can come to the place and become whatever I want. But remember, my grandma, my grandmother used to speak over me. So speak over your children. Make sure that you, you, you act like God. You speak over them what you know that God has put, put in your heart. Don't say things that if God didn't put it in your heart, but the things that you can discern, the things that you can see. You know, when, 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 when we dedicate children here, and as we pray and God start putting 
this, 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 this thought in my heart for the children. I speak that over the children and I ask the people this morning to make sure that they write it down and make sure that they remind their children of the dedication day, what God has spoken over them. Because that is a direction that God wants to do, to go. And that is, an, is, is a, 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 you know, a, a suggestion in, 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 in what the will of God is for the life. So for us, as people, we have to have that desire to do the will of God. And that was the mindset of Christ. We're talking about the mindset of Christ. But I'm, I'm talking today, the mindset according to the will of God. The mindset according to where, which direction God wants to do with, uh, go with us. So, John 6, 35, 40. I'm going to use that, 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 that scripture as, as, as a source today. You know, we, we're not going to stay too long in it. But, you know, as a reference point, where to start. Because we're talking about the mindset of Christ. And we have to understand how Christ, what was his confession, what, Christ, what was Christ's attitude, and what was Christ's will, uh, the way, the way he, he, he behaved and, and, and his mindset. So the Bible is telling us in John 6, 35 till 40, King James first, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But he said, unto, but I say unto you that you have also have seen me and believe me not, and believe me not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and in him, and him that cometh to me I will in no way in no wise cast out, for I came. This is important. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that has sent me. And this is the Father's will, which had sent, which had sent me, that all of which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but I should rise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him. That sent me, that everyone who seeth the Son and believe it on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So you see, Jesus here is telling the people who he is. He's telling them that I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He's, 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 he's making his identity known. This is very powerful. If you want to do the will of God, you first have to understand your identity. Who are you? Which, what, what God wants to do through you. You can be a lot of things. And even if you, if you call yourself a lot of things, but we still have to see the foundation who you are. If you say, I'm a worshiper, But God is using me as a psalmist. I have no problem. If you're a worshiper, if that's the will of God for your life, to be a worshiper, and that's the will of God for all of us, eh? to be a worshiper. But if, if somebody said, but, but God wants to use me specifically as a psalmist, specifically as somebody who will, who will speak the word, specifically as somebody who will sing for him, specifically as somebody that will intercede, that we understand that that is the will of God. That's your calling. That's your identity. And in all the things that you will do, we must see that blueprint. We will see that, that, that mark that you're a worshiper. We have to see that, 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 that roadmap in everything that you do, that you are a psalmist or a singer or a preacher Whatever God has called you to do. So Jesus is telling them here that he is the bread of life. But he said, I have, I have come from heaven not to do my own will, but the will from he who has sent it me. <laughs> A lot of us, we do not understand that before you came, you were. 
Let me repeat that. Before you came, you were. If you're a spirit, you never died. You always live. Before you came, you were. So if you're a spirit living on earth, if I can say it differently, you're a spirit in an early journey, on an early journey because God has sent you, God has given you uh, the, the, the opportunity to be on earth. God has given you an assignment. But that assignment you will not know until you start seeking God for that assignment. The Bible said that the Lord is the father of all spirits. And, 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 and I'm telling you to, to think about it. You're a spirit. Do spirit die? You will, never die? you will never die. Your body will die, but your spirit will live till eternity. It can live in two places only. It can live in the presence of God, heaven, or it can live in hell. So when God allowed you to come to planet earth as a spirit, he gave you a body. And I'm looking at you, whoever you are. You're an Indian, you're a Maroon, you're a Dogla, you're a Japanese, you're a, call it, an, an all mixture. That is the body that God has given to you. Your ears are big, your, your, your eyes are great, your whatever, doesn't matter. It's a body. We would say in, in Suriname language, now also, thank God for you spirit. It's, 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 that's why, that's why Paul is said, do you not understand your, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? But not only the Holy Spirit lives in the body, you also live in the body. Because you're a spirit. You're a spirit. So, so, when God created Adam, Adam, the Bible says he formed a body first and put his spirit in Adam. And, and this you have to understand. The first creation, the first spirit that he received what the Spirit of God. So all spirits that are sitting here tonight, you came from God. Why can I say that? As long as you are born again, the Bible said that that spirit that you had came alive and was born again. That's why Romans 8 is very important. I talked about that this morning. That flesh cannot please God, but only the people that have the mind of the spirit. Uh, you challenge me, let's go back, let's go back to it. It's, it's challenging because I want you to understand Romans 5, of Romans 8. Let's take the first, the first scripture first. We're talking about, Paul is talking about people that are born again. And I'm talking about the mindset of Christ. And the subtitle is knowing the will of God for your life. And he said, there, there, is, there, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Go to five. Because I need some time. Five. For they that are after the flesh do, the, do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Six. For to be carnally minded is death. Let me say it differently. To have the mindset of the flesh, that means you are already dead. But to be spiritual minded, that means you have the mindset of the spirit, is life and peace. Go to seven. 
Because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Eight. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And understand when we're talking here, when we're talking here, we're talking about not only that you are in the flesh, but you also have the mindset of people that are in the flesh. You are being led by your emotions. You are emotionally, emotionally driven. You're not driven by the spirit of God. You are driven by your own spirit. And your own spirit is not the spirit of God. Can you, can you follow me? And it's important. Because not only you are a spirit. And not only that you have a soul. But you live in the body. But your soul is the place the center of your emotions. And in the center of your emotion is your will. That's why you see sometimes it seems so, 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 so difficult when, when, when God said, the soul that did not serve me will die. He's talking about the person who has a soul, but also a spirit, but your heart, your will, all of these things they decide which side you, you will go. So if you want to be carnally minded, that means you will be led by your soul and your emotions. But if you will be, uh, spiritual, be spiritually minded, you will be led by the Spirit of God. So we're not staying there. Let's, let's, let me show you further. And I told the people it is very important that everybody studying Romans, the book of Romans. If you want to understand God, and you understand what Jesus has done for you. You want to, under, you want to understand uh, 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 walking emotionally or in the soul and walking spiritually. You should study. You should study the book of Romans, especially uh, chapter 5 till 8. So, the Bible says in, 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 in 9, but ye, ye, ye that are sitting here, are not in the flesh. Romans 8, 9. Ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Let me ask you a challenging question. I did that in the, in, in the second service. Who has the spirit of God here? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Who believes that he has the Spirit of God? You see, if you don't raise your hand, you do not understand who you are. Raise your hand. I have the Spirit of God. Everybody has the Spirit. Everybody that is born again has received the Spirit of God. And understand, that doesn't mean yet that you are full of the Spirit, but you have at least a margin of the Spirit of God. But that's why Paul is said that be, be, be filled or be refilled by the Spirit of God. You, so you have to continually ask God, give me more of your Holy Spirit. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. But the foundation is that every child of God that is born again has the Spirit of God. Can I hear an amen? Can we thank the Lord that we have His Spirit? Come on, give the Lord a, 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 a clap offering. So, verse 9 says, or verse 10, And if Christ, verse 10, be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit, 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelt, dwelleth in you. So, for us to understand that nobody that's born again 
can serve God without the Spirit. The Bible, the Bible goes a step further, and, and I'm putting a foundation before we go in the world because I want you to understand the mindset. In verse 14, that's why I said Romans 8 is a very powerful scripture that you have to know by heart. Romans 8, 14, the Bible is even challenging, challenging us. He said, for as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And 16 is telling us, the spirit itself, bear it witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if, if you are children, then you are heir, heirs. And if you are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be what suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. To make it simple, you cannot be a Christ, a Christian and don't believe that you must be led by the Holy Spirit. So if you want to will to do the will of God, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you, to give you direction. If you do that with your emotions, where are you operating? You're operating in the flesh. You don't want to operate in the flesh at the beginning. Of, of this time, you want to know from the beginning what is the will of God. And I, I, I told the people this morning, the Spirit of God is also called, or the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Christ. And that you have to understand. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I came down to heaven to glorify my Father. But I go back to the heaven and I will send the Holy Spirit and he will glorify me. So how will you understand if somebody is led by the Holy Spirit, if somebody is doing the will of God, how will you understand? You will discern that if that person always glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? If a person is glorifying himself, he's not led by the Spirit. He's led by his emotion. He's led by his selfish thought. But if he's glorifying the Lord, glorifying the Lord, because Jesus came to glorify the Father and the Holy Spirit came to glorify Jesus. There's, anytime somebody tells you, yes, I believe that all of us can go to heaven, but I don't think Jesus. Then you, you are dealing with the spirit of the Antichrist. You're not dealing with it. Even in church, if somebody will tell you, yeah, but... You know, I believe in the Bible and, you know, I don't let, I, people don't have to pray for me for the Holy Spirit and that kind of thing. Dangerous ground. You cannot do nothing without the Holy Spirit. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, because it's the Holy Spirit who quickens your spirit. If you do not understand, you, let me tell you, the Bible t gives us a scripture that if your spirit is broken, you're already gone. A lot of people think that when people have that breakdown, they, they commit suicide, is that, so, so, no, no, your spirit is broken. You're a spirit. And the battle is in your mind. And the, the, it is a spiritual battle. So the devil, when somebody now is, 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 is walking on the street, uh, you know, eating out of, of, of garbage, his spirit is taken in prison. When, when a woman says, I don't care, I let every man sleep with me, I don't care if I have to make money, that's me. Your spirit is imprisoned by the spirit of adultery. So, so you have to understand that the battle is about your spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is not the spirit that leads you, you're in danger. So my brother and sister, going back to what the will of God is for our life. Psalm 48. Psalm 48. We're going back to our Lord and Savior. Psalm 40, no, 46 till 8. The psalmist is saying this. 
sacrifice and offering thou this thou this not desire mine ears thou hast opened burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required then i said then i then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me i delight to do thy will o my god yea the law is within me i delight to do the, thy will o my god say after me i delight to do thy will o my god say it again i delight to do thy will o my god so you so so i want you to understand everybody that wa wants to do the will of god jesus as we're quoting him in the psalms is saying i delight i have pleasure to do the will of god i delight and he said your words of my life are written in your book maybe you do not understand it but the bible talks about you the bible has written your life the only thing you need to do you need to read your bible if you read your bible god will give you direction for your will i remember when i was a young christian 24 years 25 years i was praying and seeking god and then while I was praying, this big light came in, in my room. And I saw, and I became afraid, a handwriting, look for 18. And I ran out of the room because I was afraid. But I said, let me, let me go watch what is written there. And there was written, the Spirit, of the, uh, the Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. And I went to my pastor and said, this happened to me. He said, that, that scripture is only for Jesus. I said, eh? And one of, one of, my, uh, one of the others, they tell me, you're crazy. You're, that spirit that came and told you that is not of God. So I went to God and said, Father, I did not ask you to write that thing down. You wrote that thing down. And I was not talking to the devil. I was talking to you. And I can't talk to you and then you allow the devil to come in my prayer room while I'm talking to you. So you have to confess these people that you talk with me. You know what happened that Sunday? A preacher came, one of the preachers, and he preached, Luke 4, 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon, upon me. And he said, the same spirit that was of Jesus, God also wants to put on you so that you can preach the gospel. And I look at the people that were doubting me as I told you, you know. So, so, so God, if, you, if he has called you, will also give you what we call um, the confirmation that he has called you to do a certain thing. So, so for us, uh, my brothers and sisters, we see that even though Jesus, his mindset, was to do the will of God. But Jesus makes sure that he starts seeking God in prayer and in fasting. He starts seeking God in, 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 in reading the word. And you, you have to understand this, my brother and sister. Um, that when Jesus was confirmed, the Bible says, let, let's go to that scripture, Luke 4. Luke 4. Let's go to that scripture. It's, it's very important. I quoted it because I was giving you how, the way how God called me. But it's important that um, verse 16, in Luke 4, 4, 16, what happened when Jesus got his confirmation or told the people, this is the will of God for my life. The Bible says, and he came, the, the Bible says, he, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the for to read. 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. That is 
Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the same word that God gave me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive, captives, and recover sight of blind, and to set at liberty that, them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And listen what's going to happen. Verse 20. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. They were watching him. What's, gonna, what's he going to say next? And listen what, what he's going to say. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture Fulfill in your ears. There is a scripture about you in the Bible. To let you know the will of God. For your life personally. But if you don't read the Bible. You will not find that, that specific scripture that's talking about you. You have to understand. When Jesus went in the synagogue. And God, he, he was not the one that, that, that appointed that scripture. <laughs> they gave him and they opened it for him. And when Jesus saw that, he said, hey, is this is what God has told me. He said, this scripture is fulfilled tonight before your ears. My brethren and my sister, I want to encourage you. Read your Bible. Jesus as every Jew, Jewish man, should know the Bible, the Torah at that time. The, the, the Torah was the five books of Moses, the Psalm, and all the prophets. They had to know it by heart. So, Jesus knew about the Bible. I, I didn't go through, uh, through that. But when he was attempted by the devil, he, he only said he was saying to the devil, it is written. It is written. To know the will of God, you have to know what's written in the Bible. Because if you don't know the will of God and you don't know the word of God, somebody will tell you crazy things and you will think it's God. It's not God. The will of God is always written in the Bible, even for you. If somebody can tell me God has called me to do something, then I'm, I, 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 I directly start searching in my spirit, where is this written? Who has done that? Was there somebody in the Bible that God has used the same way? That's very important because God never, never, never does things that he never has done before. He always goes, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. God can do it differently, but it's the same thing. The same purpose. So, we have to understand that God has written your purpose in the Bible. But if you don't read your Bible and seek God, you know, Jesus said something. He said, everybody that, that, that seek will find. Everybody that asks, uh, uh, I will give answer. And everybody that knocks, I will open the door. I, I tell you, it's, it's, it's not so difficult to know the will of God for your life. But you have to seek God. Jesus fasted 40 days to have that confirmation. But you have to understand, people like John the Baptist was seeing and looking at Jesus and said, this is the Lamb of God that will take the way, take away the sin of the world. So even though somebody tells you, this is the direction that God wants to go with you, you are personally obligated to seek God and to ask God, is this the really the world? Is this really the way that you want to go with me? And if the, if you understand that, my brother and sister, you will be at a place one day, and they will give you a book, or they will tell you something, and you will read and say, "Whoa, I came out of that fasting, and that's the same thing that God has." So, or you will be sitting here tonight, or sitting in a preaching, and you will go, and the same thing that you were praying to God, you will hear somebody will preach and say, "Father." You're talking about me. The will of God is important for your life. The will of God is the, is the greatest assignment that you have. The will of God personally. Everybody is called differently, but everybody has an assignment. You have an assignment. If you believe it or not, you have an assignment. 
It doesn't matter how old you are. Listen, when you look at, 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 at the story of Simeon and Hannah, her assignment was to pray. She was 84 years. And she was praying and fasting the whole day in the church. I don't see that here. A lot of people don't come and sit here the whole day. But Hannah had that assignment. And her assignment had a, had, 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 had a, 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 how you call it, a promise. The Bible said that God told her that you, while you were fasting and praying, you will meet the Savior. And if you read the story about Hannah, uh, about Simeon and, 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 and Hannah, then you will, you will see at one moment that Simeon was also an old man, but God told them, you will not die before you see the Savior. Maybe it's interesting for you because you, I, don't, I don't know, none of you were in the meeting this morning, I think. I don't know if you follow this meeting. Uh, this morning, but let 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 go there because this is this is very important. Let's go to Luke, Simeon and Hannah. Luke two, verse twenty nine till thirty five. Luke two, twenty nine till thirty five. I think it's very important to show you that when God has given you an assignment. Even though if the Simon looks strange, that God, 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 God will make sure that he, come on, wait on me. Preach with me. Don't put the scripture there if I'm not ready. Preach with me. Yes? So, go to verse 25. That's why I said, wait on me. Luke 2, 2 25. I want the people to understand. What we're talking about. Because it's very important. And behold. There was a man in Jerusalem. Whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout. He was a righteous man. Waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was up, upon him. And it was revealed unto him. By the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost. That he should not see death. Before he had seen the Lord Christ, powerful. And he came by the Spirit. Somebody shout Spirit. Holy Spirit. You see, he came by the Spirit into the temple. He was led by the Spirit at the moment that, that Joseph and Maria were there to dedicate Jesus. And when the parents brought in the child to do for him after the custom of the law, when the, the, the boy was eight years, he had to come before the Lord. Then he took him up in his arm and he blessed God and said, 20 now, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten to the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And listen, what is next? And Joseph and his mother marveled all at those things which were spoken of him, the baby Jesus. And Simeon blessed them and he said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yeah, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul, soul also that, that the, the thoughts of many hearts may be. Revealed. Powerful. That's why I said, listen to the word if you are a parent, when you dedicate your child, what God is speaking about your children. Listen to the word. He was saying simply, this guy, this baby here, is the Messiah of the world. He didn't only need Israel. He also said, a light of light for the heathen. So the prophecy... Was there? I'm, I'm talking about how did Jesus understood the will of God for him, and how can we understand the will of God? And this is a, one of the things that's important, and that was Simeon. But let, let's let's go further. 
Then Simeon would come, uh, Anna will come, the prophetess. And there was one, Anna, prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Ezer. She was at great, of great age and she had lived with her husband seven years. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, 84 years. And she was, nay, was departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. That was her assignment. All the people have to understand that God still wants to use them with fasting and prayers in the temple. And the Bible says, and she, she coming in the, that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of, speak of him to all of them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee of their own of their own city, Nazareth, and the child grew and walks strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. When God has spoken over your life, you will walk in grace and in the spirit. When you are in the absolute will of God, you will grow in favor with God and with men. When you see people don't grow, or when you see a lot of trouble are in your life, maybe it's time to seek God and ask God, am I still in your will? I'd rather be in the will of God and go through tribulations, go to, to temptations, go to all kinds of things and know that God is with me. Because in the middle of my troubles, in the middle of my temptation, in the middle of the false accusing, God will let me grow in the spirit. God will give me favor with him and God will give me favor with men. Look at Joseph. Joseph had this dream. I told you already, you want to know the will of God for your life? Read your Bible. Listen to prophecies that are spoken, or recall the prophecy. Pray and fast. But God can also give you dreams. And Joseph was a dreamer. And Joseph dreamt that God would use him mightily, that even his parents and his brother will bow before him. And you know that when he had that dream, they call him the crazy dreamer, and his own brother sold him. And, uh, and the devil know that the dream was of God. So the devil did everything to accuse him, tempt him, imprison him. So that the, 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 the word of God will not come to pass or the will of God. So let me tell you something, my brother. Then. When you want to do the will of God, don't think it's an easy thing. People will misunderstand you. People will, uh, will falsely accuse you. People will try to sell you out. People will try to put you in a pit. But, but I want to encourage you, even, even though everything what they cry about, God still will bring you in his will. And for Joseph, God still brought him in the palace. Let's give the Lord, the Lord a clap offering of that. Come on, you can be, do better than that. So, 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 my brother and sister, tonight you're sitting here and you're wondering what is the will of God for my life? And one of the things I, th I thought about this morning, and it, it really, really keeps me. I, I noticed that everybody, and let's take Joseph, and even Moses, and even the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's start with Joseph. Even though Joseph, it seems like, like his life was not going, it seems like always God will, would make a way for him. And the Bible said that every time, every place where Joseph came, God would put him in position. God would bless him. They would accuse him again. He would go to and he would have favor with God and with men. These are signs. Because the absolute will of God for Joseph was not that he was with his father and his mother. The absolute will of God of Joseph was that he has to be in Egypt. Far from his brother. And if you read, I think Psalm 107, the Bible said that he sent for a man. 
one of the south, so 107 or 104. He sent forth a man so that he could, could, could uh, 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 preserve Israel or protect Israel when there will be a hunger. Uh, 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 hunger. So God is not a God of, no, God is a God of eternity. He see the ends before the beginning. And some of you are going through a lot of things, but God is preparing you for a time. And he will use everybody. He will use Potiphar. He will use your brother and your sister. He will use Potiphar's wife. He will even use people that you help to forget you. But the purpose of God is I, I, I'm, 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 I'm pushing you in a certain direction. And if you have in your heart the spirit of Christ that says, not my will, God, but thy will. And you work with God, even though if you do not understand it, work with God. You will see that God will bring you to a place of purpose. Joseph had that dream, but he didn't know how God will bring that, 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 that dream in fulfillment. But at the end, Joseph became the second in authority and his brother bowed before his throne. His father bowed before his throne. Moses, the same. In the situation of Moses, the Bible said in Acts 7, Moses, when he was 40, he thought that his brother would know that he was their savior. But they did not understand it. And because he had the wrong timing, and I talked about that this morning, don't have this wrong timing. He had to go 40 years in the desert because of a wrong timing. If you have a wrong timing, God will send you in the desert. But even be, be, if you are in the desert because of his grace, and I see a lot of people miss it here. God is a God of grace and his mercy endure it forever. So people are in the desert and they get married, and God bless them, and they think they are in the absolute will of God. You're not in the absolute will of God. You know that because of Moses made that mistake, the people of Israel had to wait 40 years more. They had to go 40 years more through a lot of things because he missed God. And some of us, we miss God because Moses was a man mighty in, in works, mighty in, 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 in knowledge. He, he, was, he, he was a man that was a commander of the army of Egypt. So he thought God wanted to use him at that moment. But that was not the moment of God. And he killed the man. And he thought that the people didn't know that he killed the man. But when Potiphar, uh, uh, Pharaoh understood that he killed the man, Pharaoh said to to to. to take him in prison, and he flew, and he went to the, the, forest, uh, to the desert. But in the desert, God still blessed him. And when the time of God, the appointed time, the curious time, the time that God said, now is that time that I want to use you. The 40 years would, would, would be preparation when God came to him and said, Moses, Moses, go now. And he said, I don't want to go. The same man that wanted to you know, be the, the whatever uh, he wanted to be. 40 years, did not want to go. But God could convince him to go. For us, it's important to understand, my brother and sister, that God has a, a, a time. But the most important thing tonight for us is that, do you want to say like Jesus? I have delight to do your will. If you want to do the will of God, God will lead you. God will carry you. God will make a way where there is no way. God will bring you to that place. And it is good tonight, baby, to bring you in remembrance. When I was seeking God for myself, it was not easy to, 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 to be in the absolute will of God. And even though I'm preaching and I'm doing a lot of things, I'm still not in the absolute will of God. Maybe as a preacher, but not where God wants me to be. God has, has, has told me certain things, and I understand that. But, but while you're doing what you have to do, like Joseph, you know, you're doing what you have to do wherever, God wants to use you for that moment. But deep in my heart, I understand that God, I'm not yet in that absolute promise where God wants to help me, but to help you. 
I was praying. I was fasting. I was asking God. And a lot of things happened. I had to let go even of certain things. Some of you, 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 you maybe cannot recall, but I like to tell the story that I was at the verge of getting married one time. Before I married Vanessa, I was the, on the verge to get married. But that was not in the will of God. So even though we had prepared everything, the marriage did not occur. And I had to grow, go through that, you know, that, that breakiness, that, that, that shame and everything, you know, because we had already, you know, put a date and everything, you know. And, and people, some people would say, I would never marry again. Some people would say, I will never take that kind of shame anymore. But God is using shame. But the Bible says in Romans 8, the same Romans that we were reading, that we know that God will use all things for your good and according to a will. To bring you to the place that he wants you to brew. So, at one moment now, God was telling me, go to the Bible school. It was hard for me. It was like, you know, leaving your comfort zone. And to make a long story short, I, I did what I had to do. And I went and I do, did what I had to do. Then I came back. But even when I came back, it was hard also because God told me, stay here. I said, Father, but I want to help the Suriname people. I want to go back. God said, stay here. And I came back. And I'm here now for 22 years. But I understand that although I'm here and I'm doing what I do, and some of you think it's great, but I understood that God told me 22 years ago, this is the place I really want to use you. And I'm doing whatever I, I'm doing to help. And even as, as the apostle of Logos, I'm doing the things that I do. But before my apostle died, he called, or he did not call me. I, I was passing, so I went to say, and he told me three things. One of the things that he told me, whenever God tells you to leave this country, get out of it. And go back where God wants you to be originally. It's not a, 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 okay, it is not an accident that we're doing this English service. I'm preparing myself for the future. I'm preparing myself for the future because there will come a time that I'm only going to have to speak English and preach English. And now I'm preparing myself to in habla uh, usted español, gloria a Dios, also in Spanish. Because there will come a time, if Jesus is not, is not Terry, that you will speak to different kinds of people. But just like Moses, sometimes... You create your own wilderness, your own desert. And there is where people miss it. And let me give you a key. Even if you are on top, because Moses was on top. You have to understand, Moses was with a high priest. He was his, 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 his son-in-law. He has his wife. Everything was going great, but he was not in God's will. <laughs> This is challenging. God can use you and still you're not in God's will. So even, even if you're on the top, for me knowing that this is not the absolute will of God for my life, I always have that desire. And I always know deep in my heart, I'm bigger, I'm bigger than this. God wants to use me greater than that. But I'm faithful. Today was challenging. I, I wanted to talk about the loyalty and the faithfulness of a servant towards God. If you are faithful to God, even though you know, you know, because you have to understand. it. If people don't understand, you will never understand. it. I came because of God here in this church. But I was not born in this church. But God needed somebody. And I said, okay, you want to be in Suriname? You want to serve you? I will use Logos to start preparing you for where I'm going. I will use the political uh, in, uh, environment to use you to bring you where I'm going. But in my mind, God knows where he's going with us. But you have to be faithful. Faithful. 
faithful. Faithful. If you want to be in the will of God, be faithful. Joseph, even though he was in the prison, people, people talked about his faithfulness. The, the chief prison, the chief uh, uh, guard of the prison put everything in his hand. Even though he was, he was uh, in Potiphar's house as a slave, Potiphar saw his faithfulness and Potiphar put everything in his hand. Faithfulness is the key. So, for us to understand the will of God, one of the things that you will see when you're not in the will of God that you don't have that satisfaction. You do a lot of things, you're singing maybe, you're doing, but you, you will have that vacuum in your heart, that hole in your heart that will tell you there is more that God has put in you. There is more where God wants to bring you. And that's not different. That is not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the wrong. It is for you a sign that God wants to use you greater. For you it's a sign that God wants to bring you to a higher level. The moment, my brother and sister, you come to the place to say, this is it. You have, you have, you will miss your goal. You will miss your purpose. But you have to understand, my brother and my sister. Understand. And even if you don't, you don't, you don't, you do not. Look, when I was with Apostle Fleur, you have to understand. I came from Bible school. And I had all this knowledge and all this strength and all that spirit. But he told me, no, sit, learn, learn, learn. And I, I, I sat for eight years and learned and listened to him. From 2003, no, six years, 2003 till 2009, I sat with him. And I said, I was praying all the time. What is the purpose of my life? Do I have to serve this man of God? And God said, wait, wait serve and wait. And wait, I will give you that hint. And then 2009, when a, a pastor that I hear it call me, the, uh, the Lord said, I want you to go in that direction. I said, Father, but I want to help this. No, go there. I went to my apostle. He said, go. So, 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 it's important for you to be faithful when you want to do the will of God. Faithfulness is, is the key. Faithfulness is the key. And even though if you do not understand certain things, be faithful. That's why I'm glad. I'm very glad that now I see in the, in the, in the praise and worship, people committed themselves. I, I saw Ramona was singing. I was so glad. Because if you have a calling to sing, you cannot sit there while God wants you to sing. And people start committing themselves back to what God wants to do through them. And we're creating opportunities so that people can do what they need to do. But certain things are learning process. Learning process. This Ramona that you're singing, singing right now here will not be the same Ramona in one year. Will not be the same Ramona in two years. Amen. Every preacher, every pastor that's working with me, maybe you look at them now. In five years, if they want to stay in the will of God, you will not recognize them. They will be greater. They will be the stronger. They will be no more no thing. Because if you are, come on, give the Lord a clap of ring. If you are in that process of God. Listen, and, and even if you don't understand certain things. I'm glad you did that you're singing again. At one time it was for you a challenge when you looked at all these young people. And you said, Apostle, you see a lot of young people. No, but your calling is to sing. So we are, we, I understood the, the, the desert that you went through maybe for six, seven years, but you're coming back, not just coming back. All the people that God has put that assignment in you, I want you to be a worshiper. I want you to sing for me. And it's not about how great you can sing. It's about are you called? Is that your assignment? Because some people can sing, but do you feel that glory? Can you feel that God is singing through them? Some people can preach, but do, do you see the glory and the grace of God upon them life? Some people can pray and do certain things, but there's the grace of, and the glory of God in their life. If they are in the will of God, God will have a way to show us that. It's important, my brother. I'm praying in these days that, that God will give us 
interc intercessors, people that are called, that wants to pray day and night for this church, for me, for the other pastors. For, 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 for that. And, and an intercessor is not somebody that we will see here. An intercessor is somebody that God calls personally and put that assignment to be a watchman in their life. And the only thing they need to do, be faithful to God. And when God tells them, go to your pastor and tell him that I sent you to, 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 to say that to you, then you come. But in the people that are interceding are not people that are called to be in the, in the forefront. While you are sleeping, they are praying for you. While you are sleeping, they are wrestling for you. While you are praying, they are fasting for you. We need more of that kind of people that maybe we do not know. My apostle was telling me all the time, I'm, I'm helping somebody else here. He was telling me, you see all these great things, but it's my wife. is the prayer force. It's not me, my wife. Amen. So some, and sometimes you see your pastor, but maybe you that are sitting, I don't even know, are the prayer force that is keeping me, are praying for me as a father. I see certain things in apostle, but I pray for him, help him. So be that prayer warrior if God has called you. But the most important thing as we close, my brother, we talked about the fact that God has a purpose and a plan for all of us. And God has a written assignment for all of us. The, 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 the clue or, or, or the most important thing of this preaching is how do we recognize what the will of God for us is? And how can we miss? And I give you examples of Moses, but I give you also the example of that Jesus said, uh, the, the, the light, my delight is to do, do, do thy will. And I told you if, you, if you look at the prophecies on your life, if you pray and fast, if you go in the world, you will recognize, you will see that assignment that God has for your life. But in closing, it's important to understand that even you have an assignment, just like Moses, you can miss it. But even if you have an assignment, just like Joseph, God can allow things to happen. People can wrongly accuse you. People can put you in the pit. The devil, if he knows that you have an assignment, or he, he, he thinks that you are the one that God will you will do everything to hinder that assignment. Remember, when the devil knew that the time of what God has promised Abraham that in four in the, in, in, uh, after the fourth generation, I would bring change. The Bible said that king that wake up, he, uh, rose up, he started killing all the babies. When Jesus was being, was being born, uh, was, uh, was coming to the earth, King Herod killed all the babies. Anytime you see that the devil is trying to kill something in your life, to destroy your ministry, to destroy your life, he knows he's afraid of you. He understands that God has called you to do a great work for him, so the devil will fight you. Don't think it's a person is fighting you. Nobody was fighting Joseph. Joseph was in the will of God. God was using his brother to push him in the will. God was using the Ishmaelite to sell him for Potiphar's wife. And God was using Potiphar's wife to accuse him so that he could come in the prison and meet the two people that were in high position, that were in jail. So whatever is happening in your life, understand. Let's read it. Romans 8. Let me, let, I'm not going to quote it. I'm going to read it with you. Romans 8, 28. That God is doing all things for good. Yes? Romans 8. And we know, 28, that all things work together for good. To them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Called according to his purpose. Called according to his purpose. That means you have an assignment and you are called according to God's purpose. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering for his word.